Halligan, NRL Insider. Joining me, Kane Evans. Kane, you're a warrior. Look at that. Yeah, the colours are good on me. Yeah, well, I'm loving it, eh? Did you ever think you'd actually play for the Warriors? Um, not really. Um, as a kid, I always had a like, respect for the Warriors and um, I liked watching them, but I never thought I'd have a chance to be here. So, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing that I'm here. They had a lot of creative players, you know what I mean, coming from across the... Uh, the Tasman, you know, guys like Ali Lautiti and some big fours, Jerry C, C. Joe Vagana and that, you would have like sort of idolised in a way some of the styles of play that they, they played. Yeah, definitely um, like the middles that have come from the Warriors, I sort of um, try to base my game off, off them. Um, I was a massive fan of Ruben Wiki as well growing up, so oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they've definitely had the best middles and to, to be a part of it, it's, um, as a middle myself, it's, it's, it's an honour. Kane, um, I'll take you back to where it started for you, uh, Leichhardt, uh, sort of in a city suburb of, uh, of Sydney. So, um, I mean, have you always been tall and gangly? You run around with bare feet in the streets and yeah. basketball hoops and all that sort of stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I started back in, um, in Leichhardt when I was uh, four years old, um, Leichhardt Wanderers, and yeah, I've always been tall. Um, uncoordinated and <laughs> sloppy rig, eh? <laughs> it's only now I'm getting older, my rig's sort of coming together, um, um, it's looking average, but um, yeah, as a kid I was pretty um, pretty putrid to look at, but yeah, grew up in the uh, like-hearted area and um, made my way through and um, yeah, I'm 29 now, so it's um, the time's gone fast uh, yep. from when I've grown up. Some of the guys you played with uh, through those like art years, can you remember some of the guys that uh, thing? Yeah, um, Aaron Woods. Aaron uh, Woodsy, yep. Yeah, he was a bit older than me. Um, I know Robbie Farrow was way ahead of me, but he was from there. Um, Sa Sandor Earl from oh, yeah. um, Melbourne Storms, he was a couple of years older than me. And um, I remember a person, you know, like Nathan Peets and um, a few of the boys in the, in the area around there. So did you follow Balmain with Wayne Pierce, Paul Surinan, all those sort of... Um, my my mum, um, she's like a Belmain girl, so she uh, yep. she sort of followed him. But I always um, went for North Queensland for some reason. I like Matty Bowen and um, Matt Singh, yeah, for some reason. Jonathan Thurston, yeah, all yeah. those guys, the Cowboys. Well, they only come into the comp in 1995, so yeah, exactly the same year as the Warriors come into the comp. So yeah, oh nice. Oh. So there you go, bit of history for you. Thank you. Old oh, boy, tell you something you didn't know. Um, schooling, Holy Ride or one of those, was it? Uh, I went to Leichhard, um, Leichhard High, um, until I was in year nine, and then I shifted out to Matraville Sports okay. um, just to pursue um, my footy career, and that's when I changed over to Mascot Jets out in the South Comp. And Matraville, obviously, is a pretty strong rugby league uh, foundry in, in New South Wales. Uh, Arrival Live Cup, things like that, playing all those? Yeah, um, I got the chance to play in uh, two Arrival Live seasons. Um, that's where obviously I met, um, I used to watch Ben Murdoch play, he was like, a, he was like the best player in the comp and um, he was probably my favourite schoolboy player to watch and um, I didn't get the chance to get on the field against him but um, I'm pretty like amazed that I'm here now and we get to play together in the, in the same team. It's so unique, you know, that you've crossed paths again. They call it sliding doors, don't they, when things happen. But, I mean, Ben was 150 kilos yeah. back in the day, you know what I mean? And you here, you're a string bean and you're six foot six, but you're sort of like struggling to put weight on. Yeah. And here's Ben, he can't take it off, you know what yeah. I mean? But, um, and his story is such a good one. But he was, according to yourself, he was the kingpin of, of the school boy. He was number one draft, if you like, pick if you're in the NBA. 100%, yeah. He was like the LeBron of uh, rugby league back then. And um, I think, yeah, we crossed paths once um, in 20s. We versed each other. Um, and then he left um, after what happened to, to him and his story. And he left. And um, for him to come back and um, me to get signed here, and we're in the same club. Like I was telling him the other day, it was, it was pretty, um, yeah, like I couldn't believe it. It was just a shock. And Apparently you've got to fight him though. <laughs> but, but you've already done that. <laughs> so junior yeah. kangaroos and yeah. junior kiwis. Yeah. And, and Benny's telling me that uh, Kane actually put a couple on me. Yeah, there was a, there was a little uh, scuffle. I think it was um, Jack Wyden was fighting someone and um, um, yeah, someone ran in and I put a quick two on his chin. But I didn't know it was, um, it was Benny. <laughs> I thought it was one of the other boys, and then Benny told me when we met, he's like, remember when we had that fight? And he goes, you put two on my chin. And I was like, oh, sorry, bruv. Yeah, but in your head, you always thought you put two on Jason Taumalolo. Yeah, I always thought it was um, on Jace Taumalolo. I was like, yeah, got Jace, but then now Benny's like, no, it was me. So I'm like, oh, sorry, my brother. Don't bash me at training then. 
She's the man, though. Uh, schooling finishes, so some of the fun in your life is over. Yeah. And then uh, it's off to the um, NYC at the Roosters. How did you end up at the Roosters? Uh, so um, I trialled for um, SG Ball when I was 17. Yeah. Um, they were Newtown Jets at the time, but it was under the Roosters. And I uh, made that a year, um, a year early. And then um, that team went well, and that got me in the next year, SG Ball, and we won that comp. Okay. And that got me into training with 20s. Um, and yeah, I just progressed through the 20s and had a, a breakout year and um, played for Australia for 20s um, that year and the next year. And then um, I just worked my way through the ranks to get into first grade and I debuted when I was 22 at the Roosters. So a lot of that time you come through with like Sir Roger Tuivasa Sheik as well. So Roger's there. Yeah, so you're Roger, up front, Roger's at the back. Yeah, Roger was at the back, me up front with um, Dylan Napa and yeah. had some uh, interesting characters in our team. We had that big tie to Vasa, the UFC fighter off the bench, um, Curtis Rona. We had a lot of uh, boys that are playing now. So the Trump team in the NYC back in that period yeah. was the Warriors. Yeah, we they were the off. guns. We, we knocked them off in the quarterfinal, so. What was that, 2011, somewhere around there? Yeah, 2011, so, yeah, they were the, what, the team that always won it, and um, we, we actually knocked them off, which was mad from us, and then we ended up losing um, against the Tigers in the major semi, which is, still burns me today. <laughs> <laughs> it had its own identity, didn't it, the under-20s comp? I mean, you know, there was such a following there, it sort of sat alone at that particular time. Yeah, it was it was it was um crazy back in the day. School forty and um, under twenties. Um, I don't know how it is at the moment, especially with everything that's going on. But yeah, back in the day, it was it was hectic. Your progression through from NYC to first grade in your debut comes with a few games for the Newtown Jets. Yeah. And the Roosters are sort of changing. Trent Robinson's coming in. Uh, the place is starting to sort of like, um, I, I guess, form some sort of domination through the NRL. And, and the players are Takeaho, Hargraves, the likes of yourself, Evans, and he's really building a pack. Yeah, it was, um, it was actually incredible to be a part of even the squad um, training with them when I was 21, because that's when we you know, yeah. got at Sam Moore, Sonny Bill, everyone come to the club, um, Jimmy Maloney, and they actually won it that year. Um, so when I was 21, that year, me and Napa were going to debut against um, the Bulldogs, and I think it was mid-year. Um, I was like round ten, and then right before the game, um, Robbo let me know. He's like, "Oh, we've gone over the second-tier salary cap, and um, you've been like, you're not allowed to play." So Napa debuted. I didn't debut, and then the next day, played for Newtown, and I, um, I broke my ankle. Yeah. And then that sort of got me out the whole year, but I still got to go along for the ride to the grand final and represent Fiji at the end of the year in the World Cup. So it was a, it was a massive learning year for me at 21. Yep. And then I got to debut the next year at 22. But probably a bigger moment that year was when you took on Sam Cassiano. Oh, I, <laughs> the <laughs> With next the shoulder charge. Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you remember that game? Yeah, I remember that game. Because there was a bit of niggle in it early, eh? Because Hargrave and Matraville, obviously, is a pretty strong rugby league uh, foundry in, in New South Wales. Uh, arrive a live cup, yeah, things like that, and all those. Cass, Cass gives him a little bit of a slap. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. that and then, so hard. what in your wild brain up there decided that I'm going to shoulder charge Sam Cassiano at 140 kilos? Oh, <laughs> man, I, I can't even remember that game. I was just seeing red. I actually got um, sprayed when I, when I walked into the sheds. I remember, like, I felt, um, I don't know, I felt mad about myself, and um, Trent Robinson was just giving me, like, that look, Robbo was just, he was just giving me that look. He's like, because I ended up giving away like three or four penalties. Oh, okay. And, um, and everyone like just remembers the hit, but I actually could have lost that um, game for my team. Luckily, they took me off and the boys came back and, you know, we won. But, um, yeah, I thought I was the man, eh? And then he just goes, mate, you almost lost us the game and sort of like pulled, pulled my head in a bit, which yep. was um, what I needed. So a learning experience. Yeah, but, yeah, I've seen red. Kane Evans has a change. Parramatta are starting to build something under under Brad Arthur. Um, you know, Mitchell Moses, Clint Gutherson. They um, start to you know try and form to be a force in the NRL. They look for Kane Evans. Was that a hard move to leave the Roosters? I mean, the the year you leave the Roosters, 2018, they win the comp. 
Yeah, yeah. Pair of metal with the wooden spoon. The spoon, yeah. <laughs> that was um <laughs> that year was ma- uh, that was a, a big learning year for me. Um, in the World Cup, I snapped my arm too. So I went to Para with a snapped arm. I think I tore my calf in the first week of pre-season training. Yeah. Then we end up coming last as a club, um, and it sort of taught me a lot about being resilient and um, how to bounce back. And then the next year, obviously, we went to the finals. Um, yeah, the last two years at Para, so I, I learned heaps. But it was yeah, it was it was hard watching what the Roosters um, done. They won. Yeah. But at the same time, I was filled with joy and happiness for them because I love them more. Yeah. And I left on good terms with the Roosters, so everything was like I felt mad for them. But I was there yeah, drinking freaking five weeks before the crowd final because we were out. <laughs> so it was pretty pretty sad at, at the same time. Trent Robinson, Brad Arthur, similar? Nah, totally different. <laughs> um, Brad Arthur's really like an emotional coach. Um, he's very um, focused around hard work um, and he's got um, good values and work ethics. Um, Robbo has very good values and a good work ethic, um, but just in regards to being um, like his intelligence of the game and life is, he's just, he's just next level. I've never had a coach that is that smart yep. um, in regards to learning about life and footy. So I learned so much of him and um, I still like, carry that with me today. You briefly touched on representing Fiji um, and breaking your arm in the World Cup. Tell us about the experience when you beat the Kiwis. Oh, that was when I broke my arm. Yeah, but I mean, I know you're still in the squad. Yeah, I was still there. Um, I just remember when we beat the Kiwis in Wellington, um, I was in the grandstand. And um, when the final um, hooter went, I ran on the field and I just remember all of us were just crying. It was probably one of the best feelings um, I've had in regards to like a footy um, accomplishment, even though I didn't play it, just to see um, us pulling through and, and defeating the Kiwis, yeah, it's probably, that, that's up there with one of the best moments. Um, yeah, but Fiji and the have been try-scoring freaks. I mean, you win that game 4-2. It was two penalties to one penalty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At Wellington, and you got the Suliasi, Vunivalu, and over the years, you had known Andruku, Kaliuate, and all these outside backs, you know what I mean, that can just play football and run, you know yeah. what I mean? And then you win a quarter-final of the World Cup on two penalty goals against New Zealand. But it just goes to show how far Fiji rugby league has come. Yeah, definitely, and especially with the the boys we had, the defence was like outstanding um, from both teams too. So yeah, it came down to those penalty kicks, but it could have been anyone's game. So for us to win on a defensive effort, just shows that we're we're taking that step to become a tier one nation. We quickly talked about um, <clears throat> uh, Brad Arthur and Trent Robinson, uh, Nathan Brown. How's he been? What's he What's he said to you? Um, it's been good, so we just got to keep working and grinding away. Um, you obviously don't know someone until you go through pressure and see how um, they react. Yeah. That's going both ways, him to me and me to him. So um, I'm excited to see what we have ahead. And he's just simplified my game for me. And all I've got to do is just run hard, break tackles and, and yeah, hit people. And that's it. Tackle hard. It's been pretty good for me. And I just want to keep learning off him and see how we go. Front rowers don't really uh, come into their own till later in their life, do they? You know, I mean, you could argue, you know, a lot of them started on the edge, then they go to the middle, guys like Jared Hargraves and what have you. Yeah. He's probably been at his best the last two or three years, you know what I mean? And he started as a centre. So... Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, out of, but um, so I guess looking at the next few years ahead, there's still plenty of growth for yourself. Yeah, definitely. There's heaps of growth for me. Um, I wouldn't be playing if I didn't think that too. So I'm definitely a lot more confident in myself and like my position because I've played prop my whole career. I'm just ready to to play, yeah. We'll take back to uh, a couple of things that have um, basically been part of Kane Evans' journey along the way. Do you remember the uh, the Auckland Nines of 2015? Yeah. Been playing that. Yeah, when we won it, <laughs> that was my, that was. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. That was um. That was actually uh, that was my experience. It was, it was such, a, like, so open and what have you, and a new, innovative sort of niche to the game. And, like, the whole weekend in, in Auckland was just like a party for everyone. But it was actually, like, quick and fast, and the roosters come out on top. Yeah. Um, 
that was a, that was a good experience. I hope they bring that back. Eh? Uh, um, it was like a mad vibe to it, sort of like the sevens tournaments. Um, yeah. I remember it's hard not to get carried away while we're playing. You know, like relaxing and, and partying in between the games, just enjoying ourselves. And yeah, we won it, which was pretty cool for me. And that was probably you coming off um, one of your better pre-seasons as well because the year before you broke your arm, um, what have you, you played 26 games um, that year and then at the end of that year you get rewarded with a, a spot in the World All-Stars game. Yeah. So, I mean, life must be nice to be travelling along at the top of the game, rubbing shoulders with all those guys. Yeah, that, that was, um, especially I think that year I got to go to the Daily M's as well. Yep. Um, so I got to take my mum there, which was like awesome for her, and just experience um, the All Stars and and winning that, and yeah, that that year was pretty unbelievable. Tell us about some of the guys in that All Stars team and that Indigenous sort of like um, week you spent together. Um, I mean, it, it goes pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot on the on the schedule, but it's so enjoyable. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, I was just buzzing out that I got to play with like um, you know like Cameron Smith and also Big Semi. Um, my Fijian brother, me and him were the only two from Fiji who made the team, so that was an honour. Um, but yeah, just the level of detail that I remember Cameron Smith played with. Um, he set me up for a try easy and um, <laughs> English raked it over the line. I dropped <laughs> it, I was like, I still regret that. Eh? Like, but yeah, I learned so much and, and had so much fun there. So in 2016, you, you start the year with the Indigenous and then you finish the year with a game in Apia in Samoa, playing for Fiji. Playing for Fiji, yeah. Tell us about that, that must have been something to go to. Yeah, that was, um, going to Apia was, was pretty cool, eh? Um, learning about the Samoan culture and that game too was, um, I remember they were pumping us 18 nil, And um, yeah, the boys just dug deep and we ripped in and we ended up winning um, at the end of the game. That was probably one of the best um, feelings ever because we didn't want to fly all the way over to Samoa and get slapped. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's, yeah, I actually forgot about that too. <laughs> wow, that was mad. You've ticked a few boxes, my friend. Yeah. And still a few more to tick as well. So after the success in that the Roosters develop and your shift to Parramatta, um, you start to play finals games for Parramatta. Okay, so Parramatta are now on the rise. They talk about things like, oh, it's okay to be in the eight, but you've got to travel in the four to win this competition. So Parramatta, um, get there the last two years for the finals, but they bow out basically back to back and haven't had you know, good finals experience. Is that an issue? In regards to Parramatta? To, yeah, with Parramatta. I think, um, you know, they've been, Parra has been in the finals the last two years and um, if they learn from the mistakes that we made when we were there, they can definitely go that extra mile and um, get into that grand final and play for it. Um, it's a different, um, it's a different thing getting to the finals and then being able to progress through them. Where I think at Roosters, um, everyone just stuck to the system, and we knew what we had to do. And um, when it came in those hard games, everyone just stuck to their role and they got through. I think at Para, it was a bit different, where it was sort of new to some players, especially being so young. Mm. But. Um, Hopefully that, like the boys have learned over the last two years, and they can definitely go that next level. It's just up to them when it comes to those big games and those big moments, owning it. The New Zealand fans would like to know um, about Dylan Brown and just how good that kid is. Yeah. I mean, he's come a long way in the last little while for Parramatta. Do a lot of what Parramatta hopes are rest on his sort of um, football ability. Definitely, Dylan Brown, um, for his age, um, is definitely. He's like wise as for his age. Um, I sort of laughed when I would pl be playing and you'd see like the older, you know, like halves um, stressing and they're real loud and they're real frantic and Dill was like 19 years old and he's just real composed and he's sort of like leading with his body language and how he talks. Um, he's definitely yeah, a, a step ahead of everyone his age and I reckon um, whoever gets him in the future is going to be lucky because he's got big plans ahead for him. We'll finish off with some um, thoughts now and uh, an expectation for the Warriors. I mean, uh, we mentioned the, the pack that's been assembled here and no pack in the competition will be bigger this year than the Warriors, to be fair. And then when you think with 
Mamalo, Fusatua, out wide and Roger at the back. Um, there's, the signs are really good, aren't they, in terms of a balance for a team, as long as it finds its feet. That's it, yeah. The signs are really good and on paper, we've got one of the best teams out there. Um, it'll, it'll be all about how we execute, how we attack and our defensive structure. Obviously, I think the last 15 years, 13 of the winners have been in the top two for defence. So that's, that's a massive um, role that um, we have to get right. If our defensive structure is good and our attack will look after itself, we just got to focus on now and just work hard. And, and that's the plan to win a grand final. That's why I'm here for these two years. And like if I win, I'm going to retire straight away. <laughs> Probably party for a couple of months. <laughs>